Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Giselle. I review fragrances and if you're new here, welcome. I'm super happy that you landed here on my channel. I hope you consider subscribing if you like my content. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your loyal support, which means the world to me. So guys, today I am here with a video which is slightly different. This is not going to be a review. This is actually a video about how to curate a fragrance collection that truly works for you. Right, because fragrances are expensive, even in the mainstream category, it's still it's an investment. And I want you to be mindful when you make those purchases. So that way you won't regret, you won't feel you're wasting your money, you won't feel like you're an impulsive buyer. And here I am, my lovely subscriber requested this video and I think many people can benefit from so it. If you are interested in learning more, stay tuned. When you want to create a collection, either when you start from scratch or either when you want to optimize your own collection, there are seven categories that I would like to take into account. And this way I will feel that I have everything organized. I'm a very organized person. I feel like I function much better when I am organized and I have a structure in my life. And I apply that to my closet, to my fragrances, to my makeup, to everything in my life. So. These categories to me are crucial to make me feel that I am not wasting my money, that I am being mindful in my in my purchases and it works. So far has worked, so I wanted to share this with you. And I start with the first category, which is versatility. To me, versatility is key. You need a fragrance. I think this is the most important category, honestly. You need fragrances that are easy grabbers, your everyday go-to fragrances, those fragrances that make you feel put together the moment you spray them on, that you don't even have to think about what to wear those days when you don't know what to wear and you know that when you grab those fragrances, you will look the part. So versatility to me is key. You need fragrances that you can wear to run errands, go to the ballet, to go to a concert, to go to a corporate event, to go to a charity event, to go to the church, so those are the types of fragrances you definitely need in your collection. And I have picked three, four fragrances in each category. And for this one, my four picks are Coco Noir, a very clean, very crisp, very feminine type of fragrance. When I spray this, I feel like put together just with one spray. Super, super crisp, very clean, super chic. You can go wrong with this one. The other one is Blanche by Byredo. I already did a full video about Byredo fragrances, which I will link here or here. I never know where. <laughs> um, Blanche is amazing. Some people say it smells like laundry. I wish my laundry smelled like Blanche. Come on, it doesn't smell like laundry. But sometimes when you have those type of clean, crisp fragrances, people tend to think it smells like laundry. It does not. It's laundry, but if you want, so to speak, laundry, but 10 notches above. Very clean, very crisp, very white, as the name implies, because Blanche in French means white. Crowd pleaser, you will feel very, very polished and put together when wearing this. So the other one, the third one, which is almost empty, is my Tiffany & Co. This is a very beautiful fragrance. There's nothing groundbreaking here. This Tiffany has absolutely nothing to do with the original Tiffany or with pure Tiffany, which I adore. I can't understand why Tiffany discontinued them. I send them tons of emails. They never reply me back. <laughs> but this is nothing even close to that. But still, it's a beautiful fragrance. I like to layer this a lot. And it's a fragrance. It's an easy grabber. You can go with this one you, or any of these four. You can go run errands or you can go to church or to a corporate event, as I said earlier. Beautiful fragrance. Yeah, it's almost empty. The last, and one, the last one, and I think this is the most important in this category, is Molecule One by Eccentric Molecules. So I'm going to repeat something that I already said in my previous videos in case you haven't watched them. Uh, eccentric Molecules releases their fragrances in pairs. So they have Molecule 1, Eccentric 1, Molecule 2, Eccentric 2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to Molecule 05 and Eccentric 05. So the thing is that Molecule, whatever number, and the Eccentric counterpart are totally different scents. So the Molecule 
something, molecule, whatever, is a molecule, while the counterpart is a fragrance that has that molecule in the composition. And they are totally different things. What I'm talking about here is molecule 01, biocentric molecules. And this is basically iso e super. that's the molecule. And it, that's also what the fragrance called Not a Perfume by Juliette Hassagan has. Because technically it's not a perfume, it's just a molecule. And it's been designed in a way that it plays like a hide and seek game. So when you spray this, you won't smell it. It will almost evaporate in seconds. But you will still catch whiffs of this fragrance throughout the day. And even sometimes in eight, 10 hours, I could still keep catching this fragrance, whiffs of this fragrance, fragrance basically. Over. It doesn't matter how much you over spray, you won't have that cloud feeling, but throughout the day, you will get those whiffs, which I love. And people around you will smell it even when you, you won't. But beyond that, it's, to me, it's delicious. It's slightly earthy, slightly woody, slightly mossy but this is great for layering. It's an amazing fragrance. This will balance out whatever is in excess of. So if you have an excessive sweet fragrance, uh, an excessive like citrusy fragrance or like, yeah, especially sweetness, citruses, like tart type of uh, scents, or if you have like a lot of earthiness or a lot of woodiness, this will also balance that out. It's an amazing, amazing uh, fragrance. Actually, I consider this a tool, a must-have tool in your fragrance wardrobe. So the second category is fragrances that are safe for a work environment or like an office safe if you work in an office setting. I also uh, did a video, I will link it here so you can learn more about those. But when we talk about office safe fragrances, there are especially one thing that we have to be mindful and that is longevity it's probably you will need to compromise longevity because when we are in an office setting you have to be aware of the people you have around you would you like to be smelling something eight hours in the day and could be a little bit too much sometimes right and some people can get headaches or you just don't like the fragrance so you really have to to be mindful i like to always be mindful of the people i am surrounded with and yeah why not i want to wear something that i don't but i don't like to go with the attitude i don't care i do whatever i want yeah that's usually that's what i do but I don't want to come across as disrespectful, if it makes sense. So when we talk about office fragrances, those are the things you have to take into account. Also, you have to take care of the fragrances because you don't want to, you know, come across as maybe too sexy or too provocative. So there are quite a few things you consider. And in, within this category, I've picked three fragrances that I've also included in my office safe fragrance videos, which are Gabrielle, Beautiful white and yellow florals fragrance, very feminine, super, super nice, crowd pleaser, very, very, I wouldn't say classy, this is not classy, but you will, you will feel very put together wearing this. The other one is Terre de Mess, I love it. This is more like a woody, earthy type of scent, slightly masculine. But on my skin, it's very, very feminine. And I have feminine fragrances that are even more masculine than this one. Everything depends on your skin chemistry, as you know. And this fragrance is amazing, massive compliment getter. And it's usually it is a crowd pleaser. And the third one is Fleur de Cristal by Lalique. Look at the flowers. You're like floating flowers. Such Lalique. a gorgeous. Lalique. Lalique makes, I think, one of the most beautiful bottles well no wonder it's a crystal brand a crystal house that's been around forever and this fragrance is it's amazing it's super crystalline it's very clean i wouldn't say crisp because it's very soft almost velvety it has some crispiness but it's not like coco noir for example it's not a crispiness like a fresh laundry just that you just pick up from you know the dry cleaners for example this is feminine this is chic put together very 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 crystalline this is like clear water <laughs> and this is how the fragrance smell if you could make an association with colors and and textures this is how this fragrance smells it's it's beautiful white flowers all over the place so guys the third category is my special occasions slash events 
category or date nights or when you want to be the center of attention you want to be the queen of the event you want to knock everybody socks off you want to feel like red carpet ready well we need fragrances for this category as well right and i have my four here my first one is Versilia Oro by Profumi Del Forte. I talked about this fragrance before. It's a stunner, it's a vanilla bomb. It's also very fruity with prominent strawberries. <sighs> Special, this is perfect for, for day nights, especially in the winter months or colder months. Stunning, stunning fragrance. My other one is none other than Italica, the queen of the gourmands. Stunning fragrance. I will link the video. I did a full video about uh, a review of just Italica. Don't miss it. Stunning fragrance. The third one is Le Lion. This is also uh, this is also standard. This fragrance is super. This is a hit or miss. We have people who hate it and people who love it. I am team love. I adore this. I have. It's like such a such a massive compliment getter for me people literally ask me and stop me what to ask me what i'm wearing even with face masks it's super super potent it's it lasts like 12 hours this is one of the two or three fragrances i have in my collection that is such a beast i love it it's very different it's different from anything i have ever smelled before and again this is a uh, hit or miss so don't blind by this one buy a decan or get a sample in the chanel boutique but it's if you like this, I'm sure you will love it. But if you don't, you will hate it, I'm sure. And the fourth one is Red Wood by Montal. This is such a gourmand. This is such a beautiful fragrance. This is, when you want to feel like red carpet ready, I think there's nothing like this one. This is unbeatable. This one and Italic, well, all the four, that's why they made it to, to this category in this list. But Red Wood is an amazing gourmand wood fragrance by the House of Montal. I already reviewed this. Today's video is not about review. That's why I'm going on a higher level about each fragrance. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the types of fragrances I have included in each of these categories. So guys, the fourth category is for my seasonal fragrances. Now, I want to tell you this. If you are starting your collection from scratch, and when I say collection, I don't mean you have to be a collector per se. I don't know if I mentioned this before. If I did, sorry, I'm repeating it. But I don't want you to feel that you are not fitting here because you're not a collector. Actually, I don't consider myself a collector either. I just uh, love fragrances since an early age. I am passionate about fragrances, but I don't collect them just as a collector would, maybe. Like, for example, I wouldn't just buy a fragrance just to have one more or to hit 100 or to hit 200 or 300 bottles or i wouldn't buy a bottle just because it's the latest release or the oldest release from 1800s or i wouldn't buy a bottle just because it's a collector edition nothing like that so i just love fragrances and that's it and i'm saying this because i don't want you to say oh, this is not for me because i'm not a collector Right, so you definitely fit here if you want to know how to organize your fragrances within categories or if you already have a fragrance collection and you want to have some sort of structure. So my seasonal fragrances are this four. And honestly, if you are starting from scratch, you can totally skip this category. But if you already have some fragrances in your collection, you can definitely have some room to make this category. And the first one for the winter is Jasmine Rouge by Tom Ford. This is a fragrance that I love. It's one of the sexiest fragrances out there. I love it. Jasmine is very indulgent, which usually I don't like that much, but here is super, super, super well blended. Very sexy. Only Tom Ford knows how, how to nail this. It's strong in spices. You can smell cinnamon and also some ginger as well. I'm not quite sure if it has ginger, but I smell some ginger here. It has some depth, it's velvety, so I'm assuming it has some sandalwood in the base. But again, this is not about a, a, a review about notes and everything, but this is a fragrance that I can only wear during the colder months because I feel like in the warmer months, it's like too much. Yeah, Jasmine Rouge, my winter fragrance. So that was for winter. For spring, Chanel number five, Lo. This is a 
such a beautiful thing super delicate this screams spring everywhere the design look at the the bottle itself it's super clean clear pure it's like innocent it's very flowery this is like more flowery than the original number five you can definitely smell the number five dna here 100 percent. but this is more powdery it's more watery it's not like a watered down version of the number five it's a different scent actually but it is definitely more aquatic and more powdery and i think it's more feminine as well this is super feminine and screams spring all over the place so for summer guys i already talked about this fragrance i love it this is like a, a whole experience this reminds me of being at the beach it reminds me of being at the ocean it's not a beachy fragrance no coconut here no tr not elang elang nothing like that it's a very salty fragrance very unisex as well <sighs> And, but this is a fragrance that to me screams ocean. It's very marine. As I said, it's very salty. It's very aquatic as well. And I can only pull this off during the summer months. And for full guys, my dear beige. Let me tell you, beige is like, yeah, if the color beige had a smell, it would smell like beige <laughs> by Chanel exclusives. They couldn't have picked a better name super velvety, very, very refined, a lot of honey here. I love it. This is my 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 absolute favorite for fall. Sometimes I, I use this during the winter, I'm not gonna lie to you, but this is this to me screams fall. So now we are in the fifth category and this is like a cozy slash relax, chill type of night, like wine and cheese, bits and movies, that type of vibes. And for this category, I have chosen four, which are Gris Chanel by BDK, beautiful fragrance with fig and tea, super, super cozy, super cozy. When I smell this, I just want to stay home. I want to chill out and I don't want to go anywhere else. This is, honestly, this is a fragrance that I, I wear a lot when, when I am at home, I love it. It makes me feel very, very cozy. It makes me feel like I have a blanket on. I love it. The other one, guys, look what happened. I grabbed it right before filming and it fell off my hands, smashed it. And thanks God I could save the, the juice and I could extract, you know, the what, what was left. <laughs> but this, oh, I wanted to cry. This is uh, Just Like Heaven by Tory Burch. What a stunner. This is a beautiful, cozy, powdery type of scent. This invites you to stay home, to be hugged, to hug other people. This is also feels like having a, a cashmere blanket all over your feet, your shoulders. It's beautiful. Very, very feminine, powdery, as I said. Stunning. It smells like the color. If the ivory color had a smell, this would be it. Yeah, me again with those comparisons. But I think imagery, when we are talking about fragrance, it's very important because otherwise it's so hard to imagine how a fragrance would smell, right? So the third one that I absolutely adore for chill, relaxed type of situations is Patchouli Blanc by Reminiscence. Reminiscence is a French house. It's not really renowned here in the States, but in Europe it's very popular. It's pretty affordable super super nice super cozy very musky as well even if you don't like patchouli you will still like this but you have to like musk this is to me more musk than patchouli beautiful beautiful fragrance i have included a, a better description of this one in my bedtime scents bedtime fragrances video i will try to link it here and my other fragrance for chill relaxed type of situations is petit matin by Maison Francis Gorgian. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Absolutely stunning. Also, this is a morning type of fragrance. Those type of fragrances you would wear if you wake up at 5 a.m., this one. Or the type of fragrances that you would wear if you have to catch a flight very early in the morning, this one. Massive, massive uh, compliment getter, crowd pleaser, it lasts very long it lasts at least six hours on my skin which i 
this really surpassed my expectations. It seems like a very airy type of scent, but it has lots of character. And as I said, it has a really, really good staying power. Very, it's, it's very bright. Love it. Very bright and very cozy. Petit Matin by Maison Francis Corjan. So category number six is the classics. How can you have a collection without mentioning classics, right? And this is for those situations when you want to be recognized for your impeccable taste, when you want to be seen as a super elegant lady, very put together, very sophisticated, very elegant, very chic. And for these situations, when you want to feel the part, look the part and smell the part, I have four fragrances. In the first one, Coco. This is the Vintage Eau de Toilette, which I was and still am. I'm very obsessed with this one and it's delicious. It has nothing to do, to be honest with you, with the Eau de Toilette we find nowadays. This actually, it's very similar to the Eau de Parfum, but it performs better than the modern Eau de Parfum. But don't compare it with the modern Eau de Toilette because nothing, nothing to compare. They don't come, even come close. This is a splash because it's a vintage version. I already talked about this before. Stunning fragrance. You can never go wrong with any Chanel fragrances, but I think Coco, I like it. I think this is my favorite from the Chanel collection among the classics. I like it much better than number five. Again, this is a, uh, a vintage Eau de Toilette, which I adore, and you have to have a Coco in your collection. So the second one, it's some, it's a fragrance I will, uh, <laughs> I will never get tired of talking. Is Eau de Soie by Sisley. This is the epitome of class. I always say this because there's no better way to describe this fragrance. Absolutely stunning. It is slightly, but slightly vintagey, but as vintagey as Coco could be or Chanel Number no. Five could be. And although it's vintage, you will never be out of style if it makes sense. And it's not really vintage at all. I think Chanel has more vintage DNA than this one. This is mature, this is refined, this is chic, this is classy, but it's not mature or vintage in a way that smells like an old book, if it makes sense. No, this is stunning. Stunning, 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 massive compliment getter for me. So the third one is Loro by Parco Palladiano number five. So Parco Palladiano actually is like the niche or reserve line of Bottega Veneta. They call it number five in Roman numerals, or sometimes you will see it like just the number five, which looks like a V, or some the newer one says number five and the name underneath, which is Loro. Guys, this is a stunner. If you like Sycamore by Chanelis Exclusives, if you like Coro Mandel, this is very, yeah, this is in those lines. Very similar in vibes to Sycamore, especially Sycamore. It's more similar to Sycamore than to Coro Mandel, but it's similar to those type of fragrances. It's, it's green, very aromatic. Smells to me a little bit like a Fougere type of fragrance. Fougere is an olfactory group. It's not a note, it's an olfactory group. And one of the main components is lavender. This doesn't have lavender at all. It has other components. It has geranium, it has oak moss. It doesn't have lavender. And for this reason, I don't feel this. It's super masculine because as feminine as lavender could seem in fragrances, they, it is very masculine. Although like Mongerlan, for example, is a super feminine fragrance that has lavender, but still lavender, it's highly utilized in fragrances marketed for men. And so, yeah, that's one of the, the main components of a Fougere fragrance. This is not, to me, this is not really Fougere, but it's very similar. Goes along those lines. Super, super chic, super, super sophisticated, great lasting power, and I love it. I, I love this fragrance. And my last one, guys, is Queer de Rousse by Chanel Les Exclusives. All these four fragrances, guys, wow. This is, if you have any of these four, you, you will understand what I'm talking about. These fragrances are, the four of them actually are the epitome of class. You will get tons of compliments. You will feel so, so classy, so ladylike, so elegant. You will feel unbeatable. Of course, the feeling always comes from within, okay? A fragrance, it, it's not uh, a magic wand. But fragrances do have a lot of 
influence in how we feel. I truly believe in that because I have experienced that and I experience that all the time. So I think these fragrances will truly make you feel elevated, 100%. Queer de Rossi, it's an amazing fragrance by Chanel Les Exclusives. I talked about this fragrance before. I'm not gonna go over the notes again, but it's a stunner as well. Love it, love it, love it from Chanel Les Exclusives lines and also made it to the classics categories. You have to have classics in your wardrobe no matter what. Even if it's just one, but you have to have at least one classic fragrance. So guys, category number seven is happy fragrances. I think that every wardrobe should have a happy fragrance, at least one happy fragrance, because fragrances truly influence the way we feel. And for this reason, I think it is super important to dedicate an entire video instead of just talking on a higher level. So stay tuned because that will be my next video probably in the upcoming week. Fragrances that will boost your confidence, fragrances that will make you feel uplifted, that will give you that kick of energy when you most need it. So stay tuned, give me a thumbs up if you like my content. I hope you enjoyed this video from today. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in my next video. Stay safe, goodbye.